Hambo is back now. And there's been some changes to the game that allows this build to be viable again. But for those of you who don't remember this, there was a core build back in the days before the expansion for Warriors where you used a hammer and a longbow. And it was a synergy between the fire field of the longbow and the blast finishers of the hammer. And also hammer was susceptible to blinds, but the fire field was kind of nice because the pulsing AOE would remove the blind before your hammer attacks hit. So it was just a really good build that was tanky, a little bit slow, but it gave a lot of support to his team through those fire field blast finishers to give out might. And it just did tons of AOE damage. It was easy to play and it was just generally pretty good in most situations, even in 1v1s because it cover up like the PVP node with firefield and stuff like that. So it was just a well liked build, but it became unviable due to some nerfs that made stances not so good, but we don't use stances nowadays anyways. And the mobility power creep of the game basically made a build that has basically no movement skills on it since hammer is a pretty slow weapon, longbow is a pretty slow weapon. So it just kind of went out of style and never came back. But with the Berserker buffs recently, now a Hambo playstyle is viable again. I've been playing it in World vs. World and it feels really good. So I'm going to go over a quick little brief summary of how you play the build. Not going to do a full guide here, but we'll show the build basically and then we'll go over some commentary how I'll be using the build in real situations. So let's just start out by saying the gear is full celestial because you want to be doing Condi damage with the longbow and power burst with the hammer and also the boon duration is going to be great because we want to be stacking up might and we've got stability and other boons that we want as well. This is also enabled by the relic of the midnight king which gives you fury whenever you disable an enemy. You can also take the demon queen relic which gives you poison on disable but I feel like the hammer portion of the build feels a little bit better when you use midnight king because you get those crits which can deal quite a bit of damage when you have might on you. Then we're just going to be taking leadership runes for even more boon duration. The longbow has doom geo, which is pretty standard, and celerity and cleansing on the hammer. So the traits are defense, discipline, just going for the hammer traits here, and cleansing ire is really necessary because that gives you adrenaline and cleansing. We also get a little bit of regeneration, which with the celestial scaling actually gives you quite a bit of sustain. And then obviously burst mastery because we want to be using our burst skills a lot in this build. And then we just go for all the defensive traits in the Berserker trait line, which is going to give us stability, endure pain, some healing, and a stun break, I believe. So the idea is to just get as much adrenaline as possible and use the burst skills to combine those big combos and get a lot of synergy from using the Firefield combo finishers. So I take Rampage because... The Signet of Rage is actually going to give you a lot more burst usage because it gives you over time adrenaline gain, but Rampage is going to give you a lot more survivability when you're outnumbered because the build is a little bit too easy to focus when you don't have Rampage because it's kind of like a sitting duck. But we have quite a bit of mobility in the build now because of Sundering Leap, which gives you a lot of adrenaline if you land it, and it'll also give you just 10 if you don't land it. And then the Earthshaker is also a leap. And then Rampage gives you multiple leaps. So we've got a, a decent amount of leaps on this build, which is really nice. But let's just go over the main combo. So you're going to get full adrenaline by either using longbow attacks or sundering leap and swapping weapons. And then once you get to that full adrenaline point, you're going to use Berserk, use the F1, use the three skill, which is a combo finisher blast. That's going to give you might. And then we're going to go into the hammer. The three skills pretty nice. We do another blast finisher with the F1 and the blast of the F1 on hammer is really wide range now. So it's been hugely buffed, making it really easy to hit in those larger world v world fights. And then you want to do the, when you've got them CC'd with the earth shaker, which by the way also is an immobilized. So even if they have stability, it can give you quite a bit of CC on the target. So you're going to use Fierce Blow, which is going to give them weakness and do a decent amount of damage if they're CC'd, which your F1 gives with the Daze. And then you're going to use your Backbreaker or you're going to use Staggering Blow into Backbreaker and then use the Hammer 2 again. And then while they're stunned there, you want to swap to your Longbow and that'll do the Geo Doom Sigil Proc 
and then use fan of fire in melee range, which is the shotgun effect, which does really long burning damage. So essentially, yeah, you, your main combo is like this. You're going to go into the earth shaker here, number two, four, five, two again, swap, two, and then you're going to use your F1, blast it for more might to get that condition application higher stats and just keep doing it just swap between those two and then you can use like sundering leap if you're out of adrenaline at any point or to just disengage and remember that you remove immobilize whenever you use one of these movement skills so it's got a decent amount of disengage here's a pretty chaotic fight we're going to start out by using our hammer combo on the soul beast but they put out their stability so i swap into my longbow i use the five skill which is an immobilize but they're immune to that, but they're going to go down from the conditions anyways. I'm staying at range here because I can use the longbow F1 in berserk mode from really far away. But now I'm starting to get focused, so I'm going to use my hammer F1 to leap out because I don't want to get focused. And I've gone into rampage, but I'm going to go back in because they're kind of at a choke point here. And we can use our big AOE CCs to lock them down. But yeah, I'm starting to get focused. I went into my berserk mode. And I can leave Berserk mode as well to give myself some some more uh, stability or whatever. So I'm going to probably leave here very soon because I want to avoid this Willbender who's focusing me. Yeah, so I just left, which gave me Endure Pain. And I'm just going to kite around here with my leaps. I went through a Smoke Field there, which gave me some stealth. But yeah, we're going to pretty much leave this fight now because we're a little bit outnumbered. So I need to use my Hammer Leap there to get out. But that means I'm not going to be able to use my Berserk mode, which would give me some super speed and just mitigation in general. I am able to go back in because the the cleansing ire trait gives me a lot of adrenaline when I'm being focused. And I use the longbow F1 there because even if you don't hit a target, it'll still give you the benefits of hitting a target. So it gave me adrenal health, which will heal me a little bit. But now they're starting to focus my allies. I use Sundering Leap to get some adrenaline. So I can get into Berserk mode again. I use my Longbow F1 in Berserk mode. And I'm going to use the big AoE for the CC. But they're a bunch of Willbenders. So they ignore conditions and CC because Willbender is balanced. I land my nice hammer into Longbow 2 combo on the Vindicator here. And I'm going to use the, the core F1 on the Longbow to get that big fire field. Which is just going to give us a lot of presence in that situation. Because it's going to remove Aegis. It's going to remove blind and it's just going to put burning on the targets and cleave it basically. So we disengage here a little bit and now we're going to go back in. I have my F1 ready, but I'm looking for a good target. I see this harbinger. I'm going to land my combo on them with the hammer five and two. They use their stun break though, but I have more CC in there and we've got tons of adrenaline because we are landing these CCs. So I can keep using my longbow F1 and the sundering leap kind of like reposition there so I can use my longbow F1 at max range, keep up the pressure while staying safe. So we get the Harbinger down and now the Willbenders are coming back in and we need to CC them because they're reviving. I land my Hammer 5 into the swap of my longbow to give out a little bit of Geomancy bleeding and I'm going to reposition, retarget their Holosmith over here with my longbow F1 for max range and my teammate is going down pretty soon so we really need to use our hammer abilities but i don't have enough adrenaline so i got an auto attack to get some more adrenaline i land a really nice cc into the vindicators port so they don't actually get on my ally so now we're going to just pressure them with the combos here of fire field into blasts or leaps and we're going to get them down now i can leave my f2 here i left berserk mode to get stability so i can secure that stomp and my teammates are now starting to get kills while uh, we're outnumbering them. So this is pretty much, yeah, we're going to finish this off. Here's a situation where two or three people are chasing me. I use Sundering Leap to reposition and I try to heal, but I get interrupted. So I'm in a really bad spot. I enter Berserk mode for some stability, but I really need to leave. So I Rampage, use the double leap. And with that stability, I avoid getting CC'd. I throw the rock behind me so I can slow them down before I use my next leaps. I leave Berserk mode with the F2 so I can get super speed. And now one of them has stopped chasing. So this is what you always need to do with pretty much every build in World vs. World and why mobility is so important. Because people do not fight fair. And it's up to you to create fair fights through kiting, positioning, and understanding your surroundings. 
you can see that they now understand that and now that it's not a fair fight in our favor they're going to leave so it's always about understanding that kind of like push pull and when you are in the advantage you need to push that advantage fast so that you can get the kills before they can get back to their territory so yeah that's pretty much the idea of like roaming in general but in terms of this specific fight we're going to be focusing this necromancer we had some good leaps to engage on them so the mobility of this build is pretty nice and we're going to use the f1 here to immobilize them the condition duration of the celestial stats also gives you longer immobilizes on the berserker hammer f1 so that's pretty nice as well now i can see that the reaper is trying to like disengage here so i just swapped to the the blades one here because i'm i'm not really able to chase them if they're going to blink away or something like that so we're going to start focusing the blades one here and they have a lot of Aegis on Blade Swarms because that's pretty much the, the build's identity. So I it's not great to use Hammer against them, so I need to use the Longbow to get down those fire fields and remove their Aegis. Now the Reaper is back in, but one of my teammates here is a Thief. They're going to chase the Reaper off. So I can keep getting this 1v1 with the Blade Sworn. And Blade Swarms are pretty susceptible to CC if you can land it in between their Aegis. And I land my... So I get blocked on my four skill but i do land my f1 and to my five skill i do the big combo with the hammer two and the longbow two after swapping into my sigils and they're going to go down to the residual condies there so now my ally has died i think they're going to die over here as well and that means we've got to prevent them from getting stomped but they blink so now we've got a little bit more time i'm in the longbow so i can get some conditions out but they use their stability, so I can't really stop this. And I'm going to go for the res, but yeah, they're way too low. So we're going to use the hammer combo on the the Reaper here. And we just use the, the fire field there and just auto attack in it. Because we know that the Reaper was going to use the blink to get out. So we're just kind of like trying to not create too much space. Because we'll have to run that far back anyways. And we just finished them off with a bunch of CC into the conditions there. And finally, let's look at a more larger scale situation because even though this is more built for small scale fights, it can still be a frontline engager in these larger situations because the F1 in Berserk mode, the hammer skill, is a daze and an immobilize. So even if they have stability, you can immobilize them. And that's good enough to get a kill in a lot of situations to enable your teammates to kill them when they're out of positioning because immobilize is extremely powerful in world versus world so we're going to be using our hammer f1 here into the combo there's quite a bit of power damage on this build when you've got the quickness from the celerity sigil so you can do quite a bit of burst damage even though you have also this larger sustained damage from the conditions on the longbow too and of course the longbow f1 in berserk mode is already very powerful on the berserker uh, power build but it's also good for condi builds as well in Zerks because it isn't reflectable so it just hits through and cleaves and pierces through everything in a Zerg and does a lot of damage. So you're essentially doing the longbow F1 in these Zergs, you're doing the hammer F1 and then you're just kiting around with these leaps as you can see to kind of survive and not get focused and of course entering and exiting berserk mode so that you don't get focused with the stability, the endure pain and the super speed. So yeah, I'm getting focused here a little bit, but we can keep leaping in and out. I'm in Berserk mode still, and I've got my Hammer F1 ready, so I really want to go in and use this one more time before I leave. It doesn't really hit anything, but I'm going to leave and safely get out with the stability. So you can kind of see how the build can be useful in many different situations, and I think that this build will appeal to many different people. And I've been trying to make this viable for a really long time, but now is when it finally feels really good to play. So I hope you enjoy the build. If you do want to see the full build listed out, of course, check out the page on guildgen.com. That will always be updated. And I will see you all next time.